Hi everyone, and welcome to the At the End of Code 2019 inner line through some ad hoc unedited video where I assume people come to see uh, the approaches to solving these problems functionally, and then I end up doing it with message passing and process dictionary. It's all dirty and nothing is functional in there. Uh, today is day 19, which is an uneven day, uh, so I assume it's going to be about in code. Ooh, I need to refresh that one. Uh, where's my calendar? Here we go. And day 19 is going to look like tractor beam once again. Okay. You borrowed the tractor beam technology from Triton. It's time to test it out. When you're safely away from anything else, uh huh. You activate the tractor beam, but nothing happens. It's hard to tell whether it's working or if there's nothing to use it on. Fortunately, your ship's drone system can be configured to deploy your drone to specific coordinates and then check whether it's being pulled. There's even an encode program, my puzzle input, that gives me access to the drone system. Two input instructions to request the X and Y positions, so one for X, one for Y, to which the drone should be deployed. Negative numbers are invalid and will confuse the drone. Okay, don't do it. It's not checking for input and all numbers should be zero or positive. Then it will output whether the drone is stationary or being pulled by something. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it loops indefinitely or if I'm going to start one program pair these positions or something, I guess. Or maybe you can order the drone to move around and it's going to be fine. To better understand the tractor beam, it is important to get a good picture of the beam itself. Okay, suppose you scan the 10 by 10 grid of points closest to the emitter. Uh, okay, so we start at zero here, up to nine, 10 by 10, but zero, nine. So it's nice that they're taking the time to give me my uh, edge boundaries there because I always get them confused for some reason there. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be centered. There's not necessarily a clicker pattern to what we have, or at least we cannot check the trend directly. Um, it seems to be, yeah, it seems to always go down by one here, but here it goes down by zero. Here it's always going down by one, two, two, one, two, and then we can't know because it's too small, so we don't get it from the picture. Uh, in this example, the number of points affected by the tractor beam is 27. You'll need to scan a larger area to understand the shape. How many points are affected by the tractor beam? Okay, I'll get my puzzle input, which is going to be in day 19. We're day 19. Yes, we're not day 20 yet. Um, and I'm guessing that the thing we're going to have to do is essentially just you know, send the um, send the coordinates to the drone and get the values we can. Um, one thing I'm noticing right away is that if I detect a point there, uh, I know that on the next row I only need to start scanning directly below and not after. And for that one on that side, it's going to be a bit more difficult to do it that way. So I could just scan everything that starts from that point on words. Um, yeah, the other thing I can do is uh, start and scan until I find the first point on that row and then start scanning from the right. And then so if my first one here is at four uh, and my first one here is at what would be six, uh, then yeah, I, I can subtract at one and get it to what I need which would be at zero, zero, and then at zero, zero, that would be zero. I add one, I get one, at one, and then one on the other side, same thing. Here it would be at two, and then at three, three minus two gives me one, I had plus one, that gives me two. So I think I can scan that a bit more effectively um, by working that way. So that's what I'm gonna do, um, or that's what I'm gonna try to do, uh, because I'm going to need to track the rows know where each starter is, and then I'm going to define essentially the outer boundaries of the thing. Um, and I'm going to track them, because I'm sure that right now they're just asking me to count the points, and that's going to be to kind of calibrate the issue, but I'm going to need the broader coordinates on the next one. So, um, 
Okay, I'm going to start the encode program, which is going to be um, encode. Ooh, I'm not even typing. Encode, uh, and I just had it parse program. of advent input, oops, of day 19. And this is going to be uh, my code. And then with this, I will uh, spawn the process. And spawning the program can be done with spawn program. Um, of code and self, and I'm going to interact with it myself here. Uh, it is going to be this. I'm going to hope that every position I send is not going to be uh, uh, the final execution of the program, and there's an easy way to test for this, which is going to be to send the program like IO0, and then I'm going to send it IO0 again just to see. Um, and I'm going to do encode, I think the, I had mentioned wanting to, I'm going to take the string to source. This one is no longer required this far up my public interface is here. I'm going to just delimitate that because I'm always getting hit kind of confused that way. Oops, I'm just going to just that one as private. Okay, uh, and I'm going to, I have collect result. I'm going to do the uh, collect IO call I've been doing just because it's useful to have all the time. So IO is going to be I've been using it often enough that I'm going to use it, reuse it a lot. All right, and I'm going to use this. So in code, uh, collect result of PID, I think is the one I had. Yep, uh, it's going to be R, and I'm going to return that. and. And technically, this should not finish if it lets me work in a loop. I will just be able to wait a very long period of time and do nothing. But yeah, it's just P for now. Our program is still in encode. Getting started in the morning, it's like a cold car. Not fully there. Uh, day 19, P1. And it is finishing. So I will need to start the uh, encode computer each time it appears because that finished the program. Okay, so uh, this is cool and good. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, it just needs that I will need to make an instruction for something like, you know, check coordinate. And checking the coordinate is going to need to spawn the program each time. So I'm going to have the code and uh, the x and y value. And doing this will require me to uh, do this and then call it the IO for the position. And that's all I'm going to need on that one. That's going to be kind of expensive to do each time. Uh, I don't need the collect result because I don't care for the program state. I really just want the last status I have. So I'm going to ignore that. And uh, here I only need a single IO point, which I'm going to return. It's going to make it a bit simpler here. Uh, then what it, to what it told me is that, what is it? One is moving and zero is stationary. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually case that out and return it an atom. So the zero would be, oh, I got double letters. I'm always making, it's a single letter for this. So I'm going to do out, it's out of the tractor beam. <laughs> One is in the tractor beam. Here we go. 
Oh, yeah, I will need to check that they are in a list. And that's going to be what I do. And now for the main program, uh, I will start at coordinate zero zero. I go down down to forty nine forty nine. Uh, and I want to check and get the entire area of my tractor beam. So uh, I will define map for code from this area to this area. And the thing I will want to do then is I'll, I'll just output that and see what I get. Uh, so define map for the code here when uh, I don't care when my y value here is now equal to I don't care here this uh, max y value and 49 49 will mean that I am on the last row uh, so the thing I will want to do then is when y is greater than max y then I will return oh I will need to have some accumulator so I will return that accumulator so I will have a code top left bottom right we call the find map for code top left bottom right and uh, I'm going to use uh, a list here to store all my values and I'm going to use the list as I mentioned it's going to be something like uh, when it starts to the left and when it ends to the right for the tractor beam on a given row uh, so I will probably want to list reverse the accumulator here. Um, all right. Then for the rest of the map, I will have the code. I will have for the current Y value, for the current X value. And... I will be able to, okay, so here this is going to be the max I don't care for, oh, I will need to have the, the max x value, and the accumulator, and generally what I would like to have in the accumulator is the previous topmost position of the thing, but I don't necessarily have it. So um, I'm going to have to make a special case for the top row, which kind of sucks. And this is going to be the accumulator for the other ones. So for the top row, uh, I have no choice but to do the kind of little full scan, which is going to be start from the left and find the first uh, value that I can have, and then do it from the right. So first from left of code x I'm going to send the y value because I need it and I'm guessing that this is going to give me the first x of that one then I will want to be uh, the last x is going to be first from right of code max x and y and that will give me a defined map of code x here. Oh, that's where I can track it. I'm always going to start at zero. The, the x, I'm going to use uh, this one value here, that x coordinate, to uh, increase what I need. So I can use a raw accumulator here. I'm starting from zero, 00, so it's always going to start from the top left without a problem. So that will be now first x, 
and y. Aha, uh -huh. that's the thing. I, oh, it's going to be y plus one. Um, max x, max y. I'm actually just going to um, that way. I don't want to redo them all the time. And now I will be able to store in my calculator first x, last x, and the accumulator. And that's my recursive function right there. I think that's all I need to do. So first from left, and I know I'm going to hit it at some point, so I don't even need to have uh, a boundary condition on them. It's whenever the encode program is going to tell me what I want. So code x, y, uh, case check coordinate of code x, y of, and if it's in, then I return x. If it's out, then I first from left code x plus one and y, and that's it. And first from right is going to be kind of the opposite of that. Where k is check coordinate code x, y of, and if it's in, then I return x. That's still the same. First from right. And the only difference is that I'm doing a minus one here. And I think that should be my entire check. So let's see how that runs. Now we've got an angry, angry program. Uh, oh yeah. What is up with that? There we go. Why is this one angry? Oh yeah, it's, oops. Lots of message passing. It might be a bit slow to run the thing. So where is it starting to blow up? Here. Oh yeah, that probably would be good to do. That would have taken quite a while to debug. Uh, I'm compiling part one. Oh, that is slow. I don't like it. I'm probably messing up with something in there. Uh, I'm going to trace only my uh, my defined map calls is those I will want first. Uh, we're on 19. Define map local. Okay, so. I'm not getting stuck on one of these. Um, that's the program. I'm getting stuck on the first one, uh, on the second row. Um, so I'm going to instead trace on my First from left, and then if that one seems to return, it's going first from right. Okay, so first from left is apparently very good at uh, sticking itself in trouble, because now it's at 98 already, which is much higher than what I had. Uh, which is odd. So I'm going to uh, check coordinate and see that I get the uh, value I want in there. If you want. All right. Interrupting it. Out, 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 out. Where was I starting? In. All right, so I had in at position 
Um, 49 and... <laughs> Did I swap my values? Zero is stationary or one by being pulled. On being pulled, zero stationary, so that should be good. The result is collected and I get all the IO. I'm starting from the max X here, and the first one is the first X. And I should always start at the first X, that should be good. What's my the in is probably for our zero zero. Okay. Then I started at forty nine zero. That's good. Because that was the other one. Forty eight zero is out. 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 And here I'm forty four. Forty one. Thirty eight. That's good. Thirty three. Thirty one. Uh, Twenty. 10, 0, 5, 0. I should get it back at 0, 0. Oh, I tripped my <laughs> limit. Oh. Okay. I know what I'm going to do then. Just try again with this. And it's in. Okay. So that was still good. That was still not the infinite loop. So let's go to 204 of them and try again. Forty nine one, that was good. Forty seven one, forty six one, forty five one. Um I could do a faster scan than that, I guess. Okay. Uh I'm going to interrupt it. There's um a faster one that I can do. I can do a last Oh, I'm going to keep it the way it is right now. I'm going to figure out why I'm blowing up, though, first. Um, so I'm going to trace for much, much longer P1 and until that blows up. Yeah, there's a thing where clearly at one row... Interrupt, continue. So, it's possible that sometimes my beam does not start at this value for the first X. Which is kind of really sad because I hoped I would get uh, better optimizations, but I can still do it without that optimization by just skipping and uh, starting from scratch every time. So, let's compile and see what we get there. Mm. What the hell? I suppose, okay, so I just have a lot of output accumulated. Mm. That's weird. It's like it's telling me that a given point in there and it's always increasing, right? 45, 44. So at some point. All right. At some point, it just never works well and never returns. The first from, the first from left is the call that's getting stuck, I believe, because it's increasing all the time. So. If I do this, I should be able to, yeah, and so the first from left is the one that gets stuck. But I'm starting now from zero at each time, which technically should be the same X I had here. Um, Oh, 
Uh, that's freaking weird. I don't get. If it's always incrementing, that should be the case. The moment it's in, it's in. And that should be the case as well. Because it's in the tractor beam. Is it possible that on some rows, I don't have any coordinate in the beam? That, that's kind of weird. That's not what the input will lead me to think. Is there should be at least one in there. Um... So I'm going to go use my uh, recon map tracer and uh, just all maps. I, I don't want to see any freaking map. Just show me my output from left and a uh, hundred. Uh, no, 200 should be. No, it's 400 because I trace for each of the output line. Boom. Okay, now I interrupt it. gives me zero and each of them yeah it th there is apparently no freaking point on the second line okay so the drawing they gave me is a lie <laughs> I cannot uh, use it to do my thing properly so I will have to uh, give a max coordinate there until max x, and here it's going to be uh, until x, which is going to be a minimal one, and uh, I'm going to need to have a case for them and go like, there are no tractor beams on this row. Which really weirds me out. I, I thought that there would be them. The numbers are never negative. They always increment. That's odd. I thought that I would have something that makes sense in each single row. And I'm starting properly from 0, 0 and stopping at... I'm not stopping. I'm going past the boundaries of it. And I'm starting at 0, so it should be good. And I'm starting at the row Y0, and I'm incrementing it each time. I'm going to get greater. Okay. That's freaking annoying then. Uh, okay, min is going to be... Then if I have one, then I know I will have uh, at least one of them. So last x is not going to need to. I might as well just scan the entire row. Because I, I can't know for sure that it's going to be... Uh, I can't know for sure that it's going to even have a freaking value in it. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to store the freaking row then. That's a huge disappointment. Uh, from left until the max. From left, co. Uh, Then I'm done. Okay, it's just going to straight LB check coordinate of X and Y into from left and that's my freaking row. I'm very disappointed in that. It's like ah it's a d dangerous assumption to only give one example map, but that's the only conclusion I can come to using this, I guess. Uh, compile. Here we go. I'm going to 
output the entire thing because I want to look at its dirty face. And indeed, in the second row has none of them. None. Wait, what? I only get like. Okay, very limited. Oh. So is it possible that, yeah, my tractor beam is very, very narrow. And in some cases, it has nothing. That's huge disappointment. Okay. So for part one, the thing they wanted me to do was just how many points are affected by the tractor beam. So... Um, lists some and here I'm going to have multiple small lists inside of it and I'm going to have one where in is in each okay so here I will have a row for each of these and for each row I will want only those that are in and then there, I can just use the length of the list. That yeah, should be my final input, that one. Two thirty four. That's a good result. Uh. might fit in a hundred per hundred square. The beam gets wider as it travels away from the emitter. I guess the emitter <laughs> is not in the topmost corner. But I'm freaking annoyed by the bit where it doesn't start properly on things. Um, I'm sure I can make my little optimization work, but... Oh, first don't do it. Don't rotate the square, it should be aligning the same axis as the drone grid. Okay. Suppose you have, but I don't. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Within it, the point closest to the emitter is, yeah, okay. Find the 100, 100 square closest to the emitter that fits entirely within the tractor beam. Within that square, find the point closest to the emitter. Okay. What value do you get if you take that point's x coordinate and multiply it by a thousand? Okay. Uh, so they wanted to get the first value that's underlined here, uh, which means that I'm going to scan a big grid, and this one is still kind of slow, so. I'm going to look at my tractor beam here and make sure that, uh, you know, I never get a sequence of ins without outs. And I think that this is correct. Uh, here, all my ins are in a row. I don't have outs in that one. And so I will be able to use my little optimization uh, right away and still get the right result from left. And my by my small optimization, I mean... Um, that um, the thing I, I'm going to change the format of my from left and from right scan, but I'm going to go back to uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to go back to this thing I had with uh, first from left and first from right. I'm just going to scan things a bit differently there, uh, and clearly I'm going to eat up a few of the uh, bad costs early on um, but the thing I'm going to do is just going to be this uh, yeah okay first X and I'm going to do the same thing so case first X of undefined meaning I haven't found anything um, If it's not found, then I know that there is no map to have it. So the find map, 
I'm going to keep my X and Y I had already max. And here uh, I will have for this row just flat out a value of minus. I'm just going to say that this row is out of bounds. Actually, no, I'm just going to use the Y value and undefined for a point in the accumulator. And I'm changing my definitions here to uh, accommodate that better. If there is a value, then I will get my last X value because it has to exist. And here that one is fine. And then I can recurse with the fine map. First X, I'm going to use it. Y plus one, I'm going to use it. And here I'm going to use my coordinate system that way. And I think this might work. But first from left uh, is now having um, the same um, x, y, max x when x is greater than max x. Then when I do that, I have to return. I don't need the Y here. Okay. I think that might work. We'll see what that gives me. Yep. First from my right actually does not need to do that. Because I know that max X is greater than what I had. So let's see what that gives me as a result. It should probably finish now. Why is it not finishing? <laughs> if it is not defined, I just, oh yeah, I need to increase the row. Okay, so here I have all of them. And so uh, if I want to count my values, then I'm going to have to do a bit like I had before, but now it's going to be lists sum because I'm going to count the values. And this is the first algorithm I had in mind. It's just that I'm not starting on the first point of them all. So here I'm going to have a row where I have um, the Y coordinate, which I don't care about. And then I'll, I'll have the, the A and B point and that will filter out all the rows with nothing in them. That's going to be my generator. And the thing I will do is uh, B minus A. And I will just add one to that. And that was my initial little trick. And hopefully that will work instead. 234. And it is a ton faster than what I had before. Which means that scanning the entire thousand per thousand grid is likely to be fast as well. So the thing I can do with then is define my map for that one, but I'm not going to do the entire thing. I'm just going to define the map for, and the value they wanted is a thousand and a thousand, right? A uh, hundred, hundred square. Uh, where's the thing? Sente's ship is 100 by 100. In this example, okay. Oh, there is no upper bound. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, now, I know there is an upper bound because they're having me multiply it by 10,000, right? And that's because they can encode both the X coordinate and the Y coordinate in the thing because they've done it plenty of times already. So in the example uh, above, right, they were doing it with uh, the coordinate 25 and something. So I know when I'm doing it that um, I multiply my value by this, Y's coordinate has to entirely fit between these four zeros. So I'm going to assume that my map is the biggest at a thousand by a thousand. And I don't care, I'm cheating on this input. But by the format they're having me do, this is a thing I can cheat with. They, they have uh, given me some input in there about the thing I would have. 
And so let me try just P2 and see what kind of map I have. It's kind of long to get the definition. I can probably yeah, skip a bit earlier when the size of one row is larger than whatever they're asking for. Uh, that's much longer than I thought it would be, though. And I should be having my little optimization going at it as well. Um, yeah, because the defined map is always y plus 1. The first x is always where I start scanning, so I'm saving one of them. It's possible that it would go faster to just... I'll do a thing here where instead of doing that, it will be uh, the last from left instead. And I will start at last x until max x. And that will give me the same thing. And maybe it will be faster on this, but I don't know. So I'm going to keep that one around here just in case I need it again. And last from x, when x is greater, is going to be um, I'm going to track the No, it has to be uh, x minus 1, because I would have stopped before then. So if I do last from x here from the code, I check the coordinate, and it is in. I keep going. If it is out, oh yeah. So if it is in, I keep going. If it is out, then I return x minus 1. Because I'm on X and it's broken. And here that would be last from left again. So I'm going to do a little thing where uh, T0 is or monotonic time of millisecond. I'm going to benchmark it to see what it gives me in terms of results. Uh, dang it. So T1 minus T0, that means 352 milliseconds. Then I'll be able to benchmark this one. Actually, I should probably uh, do it a few more times just in case. Yeah, OK, I'm really around these areas. So last from left is now the new version of the thing. Which out of where? Oh yeah, that's first to X. And um, let's see what I get with that one. Okay, so that turns out to be much faster on this grid. I'm going to keep that optimization where I just scan the beam and stop when I'm done. Um, and Santa's ship is a hundred by a hundred. So technically the first row I see, oh yeah. Okay. It's not the first row I see. It's the first that is greater than a hundred. So I need to probably check when the bottom left corner of the ship starts fitting. Um, and yeah, okay. I'll see about that. I'll try to still define my map at first. Uh, so uh, day 12, day 19, P2. Is that one returning any faster, any slower? I'll probably need to do a... Yeah, I'm guessing it's a super aggressive scan in the early rows or something. Anyway, so I will probably want to um, do an interesting search with this. 
um, where I will use a different representation altogether anyway. Um, well, I will need to fit the shape of uh, 100 by 100 in this thing. Oh, here we go. So we've got the entire freaking map. It's just long, but it's not going to be acceptable as a value. Uh, Oh, H is the history. So if I do history minus two, that should give me my map, I think. Uh, what's the help? I wanted to have the previous run. H was showing the full history. Those are the records. Information. I thought there was one in there that let me access my previous command. Forget the bindings, history, repeat the expression in query n. Okay, so I run it at here at, uh, that was 33, p1. Nope, I wanted to. Oh, here I got it, right, it's at 50. Um, and the comment I wanted at 50 was e. Oh, it just reruns the comment. Damn it. Okay, don't care. I'm going to rework that thing instead. All right, so options we got for that one, for fitting the shape. Uh, clearly, the thing I need to make sure is that the top right corner and the bottom left corner are going to both work. Uh, if I know the ship is 100 by 100, it means I will need to look over windows of hundreds of rows I can do the check um, at each one of them that has a given value, but I will need to change how my accumulator works. So the find map is going to look a bit like this, but I'm going to change uh, a few of the calls. Uh, define map, and I'm going to replace that with fit shape, I think I said. Hit the shape, so uh, actually it's a square, so I'm just going to because that's what they told me, right? It's a hundred by hundred for the kind of ship. All right, so it's going to be a fit square of a hundred. Here's going to be. Oops. Okay. Um, this is when I'm done with them. This is not necessarily where I like to get them. I'm going to use uh, what is now here a map for all my coordinates. And if I get there, then it means there is no fit. I technically don't need to have a max value, but I'm going to have it anyway. The early searches are going to be extremely costly, uh, but I'm going to make a little optimization. So fit square uh, here, of course, if I don't have a tractor beam, it won't do anything, so I won't put it into my uh, accumulator. So I'm going to keep it the same. It's going to be a map instead. It's not that much of an accumulator. Uh, and I'm going to assume still that the tractor beam keeps growing or at least staying the same size because that seemed to uh, work well in the first parts. Um, here, what I can do is a further optimization where case last x minus first x of it uh, is greater or equal. That's I know that's going to be. It 
if this is uh, greater than or equal to the square value, then it is worth storing in the map as uh, I will. So this is going to be the new map this is equal to this, and this is going to be map of um, my row, which will have last uh, x. Uh, And if it doesn't fit, therefore true, I'm going to skip that one. Usually I make the complete things where, um, you know, that's actually not going to be that costly to do. So let's be very clear. If it is strictly smaller than the value I have and the map uh, stays the same. And I can keep searching, uh, I will then do a case where um, I'm going to give it the current Y position. Uh, I'm going to give it the square. I'm going to give it the map of true. Then I return uh, What they wanted was a top left, right? So I'm going to return the top left corner. And if false, then I will return uh, or call fit square again on the new map that I had. And that's my recursive case with that one. Uh, so that will grow indefinitely. It's always going to be there. Uh, square fit maps at the y coordinate, and that tells me that I'm at the. Uh, this is where my bottom left corner should fit. Uh, I have the square for the dimension, and I have the map. So the first thing I'm going to get is um, bottom left corner which means that if my fit is here, at least this row is good. So I will get um, for the Y value, bottom left, and this is uh, probably, uh, that's going to be the row left and the row right is equal to the map. And the other one I will want is for a row that might be a hundred entries above. Okay, so I know that this should fit. Um, the value I really want here is, uh, yeah, that's going to be the bottom left corner, that's fine. And the thing I will want to check is, uh, Actually, okay. Top row should be equal to uh, y minus the square, I think. If I have 100 values, wait, because that, there is probably a thing that's a uh, row by one, right? If I had this one here, um, the row was 20. So this would be 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 29. Yeah, there's a 9 difference in there because I count the boundary. So it would be this one of the square minus 1. That would be my top row. So I'm going to do something with the map of k's for my map of the top row uh, for the top row, but then the, that's going to be my bottom left corner. And the thing I will get then is the top row of this that should be top left and the top right corners. This is going to be equal to my map. And there I'm going to do some check. And if it doesn't fit, then I know here that I'm just returning false because it's not even going to fit. It, the, the top row does not exist uh, 
so it's not even there. So here, what I need to check then is that um, top, the top left is also on the same value then. So the top left needs to be smaller or equal to the bottom left. That's a condition. And I know that the top right needs to be Okay, so here I will know my bottom right is going to be equal to the bottom left plus uh, once again square minus one here. So the top right needs to also be greater than uh, so I would expect my top right to be, let me do it fine here. Um, now, top left is the one I care about. It needs to be um, because I think I will only need to check. Yeah, I need to check the bottom left. Oh, the bottom right is going to be fine. It's the top right I need to check, considering the tractor beam grows that way. So I need the top left and I need the top right, but I don't need the rest of them. So. And my bottom left is already defined. Bottom right, I don't need. It's what I said. Um, so the top left is going to be equal to the bottom left, which is not defined yet. Damn it. Okay. That's fine. And then the top right then is the one I wanted to have. Oops. This is going to be the row left and the row I. Let's make them a bit cleaner. Top row is fine. Okay, so if my top left, my bottom left is correct, then I need to check that my um, The row left is smaller than, and the row right is greater than or equal to um, what would be my bottom left plus the square of minus one, I think. So that will give me, uh, yeah, I think that's the one. And if that is true, then I can return true and my coordinate from the top left, which is going to be uh, in the X's, same as here, and the top row, like that. And anything else here will return false on that one. It just does not fit. And I think that should work. in the square for that one. SQ isn't used. This is correct. Oh, that's the one here where I have to fit square. This square value. Let's see what we get with that one. I'm not sure we're going to get a very fast result for this or one at all. Um, so I should probably add some printouts to help debug, I guess. Uh, I should have at least tried uh, my uh, little
And that one took like what four arguments? Is that a thing? Three arguments. No fit. Okay, so it's not working. Um, I'm going to play with it and test it a little bit. So. And in their case, the thing they were checking for them was that uh, for them it was on. Um, I, they wanted to check here. They were therefore at 29 was their row. They had a square of 10 by 10 and their map was that at 29 uh, they started at x is 25 until 50 which was 49 for them I think because that was a 50 by 50 grid I think oh no that's much larger than that how large is this freaking grid? Uh, A5, quit this, Earl. Length of their grid is 40. So it would technically end on 39. And then they also had a point necessarily at uh, 20 that was going from, uh, where's the freaking thing. I need to find my maps. Okay. So at 20, it clearly started here at, uh, that's the row 20, 25. So 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. So from 17 to, and their fit here was not complete. It was 17 plus Uh, 17 to 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 29, which kind of makes sense for their thing. So that tells me false, which is a freaking lie. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to have to fix that uh, logic here. So let's see. So if I'm right, that will just give me these dimensions from the square, which would be uh, top left would have been uh, bottom left, top row. Then it would have given me uh, for the top right corner, which is the one I wanted to have. Uh, bottom left plus square minus one on the top row. And then I would have bottom left corner on the current Y value and the bottom right value. I'm going to use and bind that one here just because it's going to be useful. It should technically fit the entire thing plus the y value that I have here. Let's see what that gets me. Uh, I'm going to put a line break here. It shouldn't be so hard, but clearly I'm having a little issue. Interesting. Uh, so this should be just the top row and the Y for the bottom row. Twenty to twenty-nine, and I'm at twenty-nine, and high I have a twenty. 
So this should work. <laughs> oh god. Oh god, if it's just that. Okay, it doesn't fit anyway, but... 2520 was my... Okay. If that was the right answer. That's what it wanted. Oh. Why am I getting 64 here? Okay, now that's the... Uh, what? Uh, that's the... Bottom right value. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, that should be. Bottom right is its own value. It doesn't need anything else there. Bottom right here is 39 instead of that one, but that's okay because that's the value. I had here. It shouldn't be 39. My calculation should be of uh, yeah, that one is no longer used, so I will re-delete it. But I know it's large enough, and so. Top right is 2420. That should be fine. Uh, because 39 is greater than 34. And 20 is still all right because it's still on. Oh, wait. 1729. <laughs> My top row calculation is not even good. So. Uh, but that is a thing, right? Let's. So I should still get. Ah, oh, crap. The proper length here, that's not right. That should be it. So the thing I want to have is. The x value should be at. I have faster than this stupid shell. The only thing I wanted to have is the quick counter that I get, for example, here in Vim that tells me that this is actually on the 35th value. Uh, oh, it starts at one though. So this is 34 properly accounted to be that. And that's fine, that's 34. So, but that works. Okay, that's 34 is expected there for my top right and for my bottom there. And those aren't boundary. Why am I setting 29 here? True, 25, 20. Okay, so that should work. It was probably just a pattern that was wrong in all my things. So let's recompile and run uh, P2. Oopsie. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's remove all my IO formats because those are not the results. It is not the fastest thing, but it should be a bit faster than the one I had before. And there's probably a formula to make it faster, but I don't know that I'm going to actually make it faster than what I need here. Uh, yeah, just because I think I've kind of optimized some searching function, but not a whole lot. I'm going to pause this and unpause when I get the result, which should be just a few seconds. And it tells me that there is no fit. Uh, God damn it. Um, and if that one was one shorter, it would not fit. If it were longer, it would fit. So the logic appears to be right. I fit on that one. Uh, if I needed that, it would still fit. If I needed a bigger square it wouldn't fit unless I added you know a 35 here the 40 is still there Ooh. oh yeah I will need to make it uh, on the square 19 that way and it would fit do I need to search for something much bigger than a thousand by a thousand because that would suck really really bad
I can't believe that it would be this big and this is going to be so incredibly slow. Uh, I'm just going to leave it in pause and see if it's there and that's going to tell me that the algorithm is not that is not good to fit the square, which would be a pain in the ass, uh, but I'll try to figure it out otherwise. All right, so the thing is clearly not finishing in a reasonable amount of time. So uh, I'm going to return back to this. I'm going to uh, define map for that one, and I'm going to play with it to debug my stuff. So um, I'm going to go here, and map is going to be um, advance. No, it's day 19, P2, and that will let me at least, you know, dig into the map and make sure that at some point somewhere I would get what I need. Um, because otherwise uh, it's going to be tricky to debug it without any of the samples that I need. So this will give me at least my big row. I will turn it into a map. I will be able after that to explore the uh, contents in there and fit a square and then write the program that I need to do it. But without the map, it's going to be just very hard. Uh, although I could have done it first with a smaller map here, but I'm going to use the big map and I'm going to find for a 10 by 10 square, for example, or something like that, and uh, scale as I go to see if it makes sense. So now I have this map, uh, map's size of map should be, no, it's not a map, it's not a full map yet, it's more like a list than a map. I'm going to forget the map. Uh, so for these, all I have is, I'm really freaking annoyed by that little zero, zero point. I don't know why they put it there. Uh, but yeah. So uh, the map is going to be equal at maps from list of uh, the key and the value, which are going to be the key and the value of of the list where v is not equal to undefined. Okay. So now I should be able, for example, to get a list of all the uh, X and Y, I'm going to order them by, yeah, X and Y values for uh, Y, X zero. I'm going to get X zero, X. This is a point. <laughs> uh, y is not needed. And map to lists of map where x1 minus x0 is greater than or equal to 99. I will sort them. So what's the length here? 483 of them. Okay. Am I doing that boundary right in my little check here in the unused function? Where square fits map is That should be the thing. Uh, I'll be a bit simpler here. Square fits map, square minus one, square minus one is what is used everywhere. For every map, when I update the map because it fits, because there is one. Yeah, and I 
only do that when it fits the map. That should be good. And then I add it to the map on the current y value. That's correct. And for square fits map, the thing I check is always top row is the current one. Minus square minus one because I'm looking up. That should be good. The bottom left of my row because that's always the one I'm checking first. And that would be the first x. It should be good. The row left and the row right. So the row left is smaller than or equal to the bottom left. So therefore it is either equal or contained in it. And that should be true. And the top of the right should be able to contain it. So that plus the bottom left plus the square minus one. That's x coordinate. So that should be good. Because this one right here, yeah. The left of the row is smaller than you go on the right of the row, so it can entirely contain the entire range. The row for the square. Yep. Okay. So that should usually be good. So all of these rows here, I'm going to grab their uh, Y point, not the length, just the Y. That's cool looking stuff. Um, that's fine though. Uh, <laughs> let's, you know, I'll, if I put them that way, it shows what they are. So technically for all of these, I should be able to call my day 19 uh, square fits map of, you know, uh, if I'm starting at the Y position, that should be the bottom Y position. I want a square of only 10 by 10 and I give them my whole freaking map. Then I should be able to at least have a few of them return me the right freaking thing. So if I do it with a hundred square now, and I only want um, x for x in this, where x is not equal to false, or just, yep. There are truly none in my map that do this. This is kind of heartbreaking if it's really true, because here I have a bunch uh, if I try 50 square, I get a bunch. So I do need to trace something that is extremely larger than what I have. Um, okay, uh, the scaling factor of my thing is probably kind of low. So I'm going to... Oh. oh, that's interesting. I don't necessarily need to have a max value here for, um, I just thought of something, fit square. Because, and, and this is because um, I've done my last from the left. Uh, I no longer need to start scanning from the outer right edge of the thing, right? I don't actually need um, any boundary in terms of X and Y coordinates in terms of a max X value. Oh yeah, I need one because some of them contain nothing. God damn it. Uh, so it's possible I will need to search for further than that. And it doesn't fit in that one. All 
Actually, I know that for my input, right, my first X's, I had them before, is from like entry zero, entry 100 or something. So uh, if I want to fit a square by 100, I just need to, you know, I, I know it won't be in the first 100 of them. Um, I can start searching at 100 by zero. And here I could technically uh, since now I know I will always have a point, I should in theory completely be able to get rid of these edges and scan as far as I want. And uh, that should not cost me anything because I'm starting at that value. I'm uh, not in, I'm in fit square. So I'm starting at this value. This is the max value where I decide, you know, there's no fit it after 10,000 rows. It's that, that's fine. But my scanning is still going to be cheap because of that little first X thingy in my fitting the square. I will always have a value and probably what was very expensive was scanning these five first rows of always going into a garbage field or something. Um, I'm going to try that and see what I get for this. Because it seems that my square fitting works um, for this day 19 P2. Although I haven't checked it by hand um, to know that they work. And maybe I should have. We'll see. Um, I wish I had started a uh, console for that though to be able to trace the result. I'm just going to wait it out. Uh, and read my emails for the day at work and see if I get something that kind of works. Oh, uh, yeah, interesting thought I had while reading my stuff. Um, I probably can use instead of that one because the maps are larger. Um, I'm still going to do some analysis on the map I had just because, you know, I feel that uh, at some point, those that finish before the oh, interesting, a lot, a lot of them seem to finish straight up on the thousand on the map. So let me see for all my points. Uh, X one is a thousand, and that's weird because. Uh, you know, uh, when I, I'm i building my map here, uh, and I'm going, oh, I'm still doing the max X here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it's possible that uh, if I try these here, what I would want to have is, in fact, the whole point, and I sort them. I will want to sort them here by actually the size of um, the y and x1 minus x0. And uh, I want the biggest one. I uh, just want the last one. So in what I'm doing, 195 is... Uh, the greater value I can get in there. Um, and the actual X1 value is 1999. So yeah, I am going to have to go out of bounds for my thousandth thing, uh, because I'm guessing it's not going to be super far all of it. Um, but my problem here, we're probably the same where I was putting the max X value from the last from the left. And uh, the last from the left does not actually need to have any boundary on the max X, I think. Right? It's just so I finish searching earlier. But there's actually no reason for me to do that because um, I will get it sooner or later by being out of bounds. And I don't need to have any external position from that one. Um, last from left here, I don't need the max X. 
And the reason why this is interesting is that I know from the coordinates that my top left value is probably going to be in the thousands, uh, but not the last one there. So last from left, last from left here doesn't need to have that max value at all. That's an artificial limit. Um, last from left, last from left. And I can probably still do my fit square for a thousand, thousand in here uh, because of the top left value. But um, it's going to be different on that one. And I only want to do the part two. And then I probably need to wait. And it's probably going to take about 30 seconds. Uh, but I don't necessarily care a whole lot for that because I'm hoping I will at least get my little fit in here. Uh, I'm also starting at position zero, row 100. I know that this should be safe. Because until then, it's very unlikely that I get 100 of them in the map. Uh, fitting my square first from the left. That's still fine. Last from the left. That one should only care about the first there. That should be correct as well. No fit again. God damn it. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, I can't just define the map. Uh, so I'm just going to do a big map function that's going to be my map debugging call that I want here. And I'm going to do it by calling this. I don't get why I don't have it, but maybe I need to search bigger square or bigger space. Uh, find map and I'm going to just do, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it as a list. And I'm going to get that value anyway and see what I get for it. No, that's big map, not bitmap. Audrey, uh, compile. L is uh, day 19. Big map. Don't care. Just give me the freaking map. And I'm starting it from 0 to 100 as well, which I'm not afraid is going to be a problem. It's going to be interesting to see the output for it, though. Now, it should be in the right sorting order for all the things. Um, and it is bigger than uh, what I'm creating on the other one here. Because the, the one thing that could be a problem was if uh, this thing was not right. But I believe it is right that the last one is going to be greater than the first one. And the space needs to be larger, so that's all right. Uh, the map, the first is still coming first. That should be good. Which at least means that this. Yeah, I, I feel that the logic is right. Maybe it's the map building that's not, but. Ah. What annoying thing. And I'm still growing on that one. Huh. I thought my big map was starting from uh, zero. Oh, no. Okay. I started from the zero, zero point. That's good. Uh, so what was I checking a while ago? I wanted to do my sorting here. Uh, I'm going to remove that. Uh, 242 at row 981. Interesting. What do I get on <laughs> Okay. So <laughs> I am literally not finding the solution in the big S defined square that I have. If I print that one, like, yeah. 
981 is the last row. I legit can find something on the point X, a thousand. So <laughs> that was good. Um, clearly, yeah, it's, it has to be something really freaking stupid about my coordinates. Uh, because it has to fit in there. It just has to. So I'm going to turn my list into a map list of L of um, point when the point is equal to this. And I have a tuple in there. I don't want the empty one in the list. And this is going to be my map M. Okay. So I have square fits map is exported. in day 19 and by all means <laughs> I should be able to you know uh, start on the row 981 that's going to be my longest freaking one I'm going to have to define a square that's a hundred by a hundred and my map is just going to be this okay so this is valid then why the hell is my function not finding it in there because it should have found it at that point. I have a thousand by a thousand. I'm starting here. Maybe it's just zero thing in there, but if it is, I'm really mad. Uh, so I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to keep looking at my things, but I'm going to uh, spawn IO format of whatever value I have in there. That's going to be day 19 P2. Just run the freaking thing in another process, and during that time, I can look at what I have. But I'm pretty sure that if I have this um, and I do something like 400 doesn't fit, I can probably do a binary search by myself and find a thing where it does fit. Um, so I had 40 fits, so 420 fits, 10 doesn't, 915 fits. 12 fits, 11 fits, and I knew that 9, 10 didn't fit. And so that would be my square there, right there. And, um, oh, wait, this is something funky. So this is my, I'm telling you, oh, wait, okay. I'm probably flipping thing upside down. That's the thing I'm seeing right now. Um, So the top row should be negative, and the ter oh, the thing I return here should be uh, the bottom left, yes, and the top row should be 812. And that's fine, because in my map, if I maps, okay, yeah. So at row 911, I get my top corner, which is at, oh, wait. What do I have in my maps get at uh, 9.11 in the map? So line 9.11 has from 9.29 to 11.53. And 0.12 has... Uh, 10.28, and yeah, that has to fit. Wait, uh, yeah, that should. So I'm going to do something, right? To make sure that at least I'm working from the right kind of finding, I'm going to do that thing I by hand. So that's going to be uh, my value I had was here. Yeah, the other one returned no fit. It found nothing, but I did by hand. So some optimization I'm doing uh, is messing with things plus 812 and I'm at least going to see if my value makes sense and if it does then I know that it's just about making the thing work yeah okay that's the right one so <laughs> I know my answer and uh, it might just be shitty optimizations I'm doing because the map in the logic works the square fit maps work so the map building 
is a problem here. So uh, I'm at y, I'm at first x, I'm at last x. But technically this should Yeah. So I'm going to do a thing anyway, where, you know, I'm going to uh, use this. New map is just equal to that bit. I'm going to drop the rest and keep doing my square fits map at every single iteration. It should be fast anyway to do the logic because clearly my square fits map logic works. So I'm going to compile that. I'm going to respawn the other result I had in here and wait uh, for the thing. Interestingly, I got a no fit issue again, uh, which is kind of dumbfounding uh, just because, you know, I got the map, I got the answer, but somehow my uh, fit square logic is, is not recording. And I did have the 100th value as well. I have the right result. Uh, the max value should fit within the 1,000 I needed. So I know that this boundary is good. First from left, if it is undefined, fit square x, y plus 1. That's good. The max remains the same. The square remains the same. The map remains the same. Last from left is going to be last x, first x, and this was the same one I used to build my map. The new map is exactly the same points. What the hell am I? So I'm still calling it with the y value. That's the one I expected to get right. Yes. And that's even what I did by hand with the other one. Oh, oh no. Oh no. This is the dumbest, stupid mistake on the entire planet. <laughs> I need to check in on the new map because every time I check, I'm checking on the map without the rows I need. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I feel like a huge moron because I've been chasing this forever and I probably had a working solution a long time ago. And this is the only freaking thing that's not good with it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not going to be fast and I don't think I can make it faster without doing some algebra or something like that. But I think this is all I needed. Oh. And this is one of the cases where... Uh, you know, where you say uh, single assignment and immutability is an advantage. In that case, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't because I made, I think, the stupidest, stupidest inattention error possible. And I'm hoping I can delete that line and not bring it back. Uh, and that it will find my result. Yes, and here we go. God damn it. Oh, God freaking damn it. That was the stupidest mistake I could think of. Oh no. And P2, I can do my little optimization here of starting on point 100, 100. Because, you know, I'm never going to get something smaller than that because I need at least 100 blocks, right? And so I can probably speed it up just by picking these things by knowing that my value is closer to the thousands and still get something good. Ah, oh, sweet. What a shitty thing. So I know it should be 200, 200 it's because the first square I know for a fact is not already filled and I can skip and skip and skip on these. Um, thousand is good. God damn it. Um, and here in fact, the thing I can probably do is, you know, I can probably skip by more than one for a lot of them uh, based on the difference between my last x and first x. So, uh, I, I know that if, 
probably the thing that I could do here is define a jump value. And so if last x minus first x is, you know, less than half the square or something like that, because I, I could, yeah, there's nothing that tells me that uh, I can't do it that way. This is, I feel, equivalent to a string matching algorithm where um, I know that um, because my top left, uh, because the, the end of my match is not available, I should be able to skip by a bigger area to fit it within the map. And, uh, you know, if that one doesn't fit, but the problem is that I don't want to skip too far ahead where my match would not be good. Uh, but at the same time, I know that the first time it fits at the top in there, uh, there's a huge chance that there's a big drift at the bottom. So, like, I could probably be able to say that if it is greater than one, then I give it one as a jump. And if it is much smaller than that, then I could give it a jump of the square value itself and probably speed things up a whole lot. I'm going to try just that. Uh, before I do this, I think we have an idea about how much time it takes, but... And let's see what that gives us, because that should skip lots of rows rapidly. And not that fast, though. I don't necessarily know how to make it a lot faster. Yeah, I think the thing I would probably need to do is that big uh, analysis about... Uh, it's a bit faster. It works. Uh, and so, advent race. Day 19. Race 19. I'm just going to get the final timings for that one. Um, and in the meanwhile, I guess we'll see you for day 20. Uh, once again, I cannot wait for this to be over again. Uh, Christmas time is coming closer and closer. And this is taking more and more of my time uh, every day. So let's see what I get in there. Yeah, 21 seconds, which is not great. Don't like it. Uh, but yeah, could have probably sped things up a bit with the encode computer. I could have done one of the things I could have done that would have been a lot faster here um, is that the last from left, a little bit of code could arguably do a binary search or an exponential search because as the things get longer it needs to search more and more to find the last coordinate and that would be cheaper but at this point it's taken enough time uh you probably get the logic that i uh, you would need to do that one and you know i just want to do something else like uh do my work so i'm quitting this because it works have a good day